Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great Sunday morning, uh, whether it's that early slot or the later one that I think is a much more humane on the old human person. Uh, but it is good that you joined us for another Sunday morning here at Faith in Our Hometown. We're glad that you join us on Sunday mornings for this conversation uh, about things that kind of matter to us as people of faith uh, as we try to make Joplin a better community and the greater Joplin area. And all of you out there in Kansas and Oklahoma and down in Arkansas, we're just glad you're here and joining us, spending some time with us this morning. <laughs> You know, in our culture, we have we 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 do a lot of things around uh, when, when the culture of death. Okay, and um, when that happens, when somebody dies, we go through a lot of trouble to do things certain ways. Uh, we got a lot of beliefs and things about that, uh, and we got a whole industry that basically helps us to get through all that and all those times. So I'm going to have somebody here from the funeral industry today, one of our local mortuaries here in Joplin from Mason Woodard. So I'm going to be talking to Austin Woodard, and we're going to be right back into this Mercy Minute to talk a little about death and dying and what happens uh, when somebody dies in our culture. Hi, I'm Karen Brown. Last year, my sister was diagnosed with ovarian stage 3C cancer in her early 40s. As a mother of two beautiful children, I didn't think twice about undergoing genetic testing here at Mercy. Even though I have grandparents and an uncle battle cancer, seeing a genetic counselor wasn't something that ever crossed my mind until my sister's results showed that she was BRCA2 positive. We've come a long way, especially in about the last five years. Genetic testing can pinpoint the cancers that you are at highest risk for in order to detect them earlier or if possible prevent them. My genetic counselor at Mercy, Robin, took note of my family health history and answered all of my questions. She even suggested my brother get tested. Robin said if he tested positive, he may be more likely to be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and that is what I lost my uncle to. There are uh, many other types of cancer that are also possibly hereditary, um, such as colorectal cancers, pancreatic cancers. I honestly was prepared to hear that I was positive, but indeed I was negative. And what a huge relief that was, not only to me, but to my family, to know I wasn't at a great risk of developing breast or ovarian cancer. Diet, lifestyle choices such as smoking or drinking all contribute to our risk for cancer. Genetic testing is taking just kind of one piece of that. Talk to your primary care doctor or your OBGYN and ask for a referral to a genetic counselor. Well, again, thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning here at Faith in Our Hometown. My guest this morning, Austin Woodard of uh, Mason Woodard Mortuary and Crematory uh, here in Joplin. And so, uh, Austin, welcome. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and about uh, your family business? I appreciate you for having me. Uh, yeah. I'm a third generation funeral director, um, born and raised here in Joplin. Um, my father and my grandfather both uh, Bruce and Wayne Woodard, and then of course now my mom, uh, okay. Kim Woodard, is also an owner of Mason Woodard Mortuary. Um, Might as well throw the rest of the family in over here. Yeah, my, both my grandmothers, my aunt, my yeah. cousins, my brother, my sister, we've all been, yeah. had a, a title there at one point or another. Yeah, so. yeah which is great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that is interesting because, I mean, you know, uh, most of the other groups are, uh, you know, have some family involved, but you, you seem to be of all the folks in the area, mm -hmm. you know, the one that kind of like has passed it down through generations. We're one of about three and just in our immediate area, whether you, you know, the surrounding areas like Clark's and Neosho is another one, uh, Durfelt's over in Durfelt's, um, right. Kansas, uh, you know, it's one of those ones that, um, you don't see very often anymore. Uh, probably in just communities like ours, in the smaller, tighter knit communities that uh, family, it hands down to generation to generation. Whereas, um, you know, as we go through with different, you know, different times and different things change and you, you don't see family businesses like that hardly yeah. anymore. Well, I know, what was it that was, um I was talking with uh, BJ Goodman when he when he bought uh, Nell over in Carthage, mm -hmm. and and now with one there's one person left in that family, mm -hmm. you know after many many generations same thing. Yeah. You know there's one person left and he just kind of said I'm tired and I'm old and I want to sell to somebody I want to work for somebody else for a while and yeah. is doing it still there. But my we, my kids saw me go through it. I, they don't want to do it and they want to try something else that yeah. might be their passion and it happens that way. You know and again it's interesting because I think those things come and go in families. But 
But I mean, mm -hmm. you you know, it is uh, it is just interesting watching the way some of that unfolds. I just want to mm -hmm. go on public record as saying I love, you know, for a city the size of Joplin, we get we get three directors here in Joplin, mm -hmm. uh, two kind of owned by the same operation, BJ, who I mentioned, at both at Parker and at uh, Thornhill Dillon. Mm -hmm. Thornhill Dillon was the old fashioned Catholic one, you know, <laughs> whatever. But I'm just saying. I always am very comfortable when you know uh, that I, when somebody says, well, "Where am I going to go and what am I going to do?" I, I don't have to say, "Please don't go here." Yeah, you know, because they're difficult to work with or whatever. I've just I've been blessed, right? You know, and I think we're blessed in this town to have, you know, good people who care about people when they die. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody that I want. You know, I'm, I'm, other communities, God forbid, where I've lived in the past. You know, sometimes I've been like, "Ooh, I don't really like it when they work with so and so." Mm -hmm. You know, because it's always difficult or challenging or whatever. Or but my church has always gone to. Oh, my church my, always on all. Or my families use them. You know, that was always the big. You know, big thing was yeah. who your family uses, and you know, and it's gotten to the point now where, you know, families aren't so traditional anymore. Right. So, you know, the one thing that everybody wants now, and with a more open-minded community that we have, and the younger generation, and the conversations are being had, well, just because it's always been the way doesn't mean it's the way we want to do it anymore. Right. right. So, and especially when it comes to death, uh, you are seeing a younger generation that's more willing to have the conversation about about death and dying and their mm -hmm. family. Their family members. It used to be tech, kind of a taboo conversation. Well, you know, and there were certain things that were taboo. Like, for example, mm -hmm. up until the last like thirty years, mm -hmm. you know, and actually, really more since probably the mid eighties. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is coming on thirty years. I've got. I'm getting old, but, <laughs> but. We didn't allow for Catholics didn't allow cremation, mm -hmm. and that could, well, that went all the way back to the 16th century. Right. You know when we were fighting about things after the Protestant Reformation, right. and then we just forbade anybody to be cremated because some people were saying we're going to cremate our bodies so that God can't raise from the de you know. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, now we just go as long as you're not doing it for that reason, it's okay. Right. Yep. And and, and like you said, is and even the different faiths are becoming more lenient towards like their rules or their expectations or you know you may have traditions like as far as certain religious uh background that you might be but then also different cultural aspects are coming into play now as far as what folks do as far as their tradition their burial tradition as mm -hmm. far as the end of life sure. uh celebration whatever you want to call it um cremation definitely has become one of those things that has grown in popularity whether it be not only just a cultural thing like with the what they call the nuclear family right. families aren't as big as they used to be anymore uh you know maybe you might be lucky to be able to name a second cousin nowadays whereas i could go right down the line and tell you everybody in my family tree and that that is becoming far further and far, fewer between and you see yeah. that not only just with how people handle their end-of-life traditions like cre popularity of cremation but it also becomes an socioeconomic situation Cremation is not as expensive as a traditional burial. So people make the choice based on financial. It may not be religious, it may not be faith-based, but it may be financial situation that right. they're making their decisions on. So as a funeral professional, one of the things I have to be is flexible in what I am able to provide at my community and how I'm able to, yes, we do provide cremation uh, services, but we also provide the traditional burials. And then we're able to facilitate the needs of the people in our community. Right. And whether it be, like you said, either by studying their, their beliefs and their practices, but also being accepting and, and lenient and being able to, yes, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll be happy to do that. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you, I'm sure, I, I, well, I know all of you well enough to know that you'll do whatever you can mm -hmm. to try to meet those needs. And if you mm -hmm. can't, then you'd probably tell people up front, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we just can't do that mm -hmm. for whatever reason. But, but, but most of the time, you, that's, what you, that's what you're there for. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like with me. Now, I'm a little bit more hemmed in than you are <laughs> uh, because there are ki all kinds of different beliefs about, you know, the burial. And we've got certain ones, and as Catholic, you know, we do it a certain way. Mm -hmm. We do our burials a certain way. Mm -hmm. But um, but beyond that, you know, I, I try to, you know, meet, well, you know, as long mm -hmm. as they're not wanting to do the, you know, um, you know, mm -hmm. 
highway to hell for you know the recessional hymn or something i mean i guess i mean you know i you know there are certain things that i kind of have right. to you know that i just well, i would say no i don't think we can do that right. and, you know like for secular music at our mm -hmm. funerals you know no we you know we, we want to make sure the funeral music is god-centered and same thing you know all those kinds of things but when mm -hmm. you do all that you know, you talk through folks you want to try to meet people mm -hmm. sometimes i've taken some of their oh but they love this particular song well mm -hmm. I, sometimes i can work that into the homily mm -hmm. whereas i might not necessarily can allow it as a part of the you know the ritual mm -hmm. I might be able to work it into the homily if somebody gives me good stuff to go along with it right. you know what I'm saying so how do we meet folks at those moments and, and, and you've got you've got to play to a much broader range than I do I can just you know if somebody wants me to you know, come to a burial and they're not Catholic mm -hmm. I don't have to hang out my shingle right you guys are there to hang out your shingle to whoever dies which mm -hmm. is the last time I checked just everybody yep <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you've got to be willing to do it, like you said, because what you're seeing is not so much as uh, the traditional sense, whereas, you know, Catholicism, you still have your traditions, and uh, those are, are met, you know, as part of that church, you, you, the people accept it, but then you get into the more secular, you know, the more popular, I saw this at this funeral, I want this in mine, so, yeah. or I want to do something along those lines. So you see a break in the traditions, but it's also... What it's geared toward is a personalization, whether it be the person that they're there to honor or be the person that is doing the honoring. Because they always used to say that the funeral is not for the person in the casket, it is for the people sitting in the pews. Yeah. And a lot of folks approach it as, this is the last thing I can do for my loved one, so I'm going to do everything in my power to do what we've talked about and in the way we talked about it, and I'm not going to budge from it, and it is my job to, as the funeral director, say, I hear you we can do that that way yeah mm. yeah so. again mm -hmm. just as long as we never have to fight about it yeah that. exactly i never have i really <laughs> right. never have i won't i won't put i won't push you on it <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah everybody's smart enough to know well you know you do have to give permission from father jay for that I'm yeah <laughs> and then they're just like what is it when somebody was talking to poor father paco about me about something and i said well we're going to ask father jay and then they went but he'll see he'll say no anyway and i'm, <laughs> and I'm like i don't just live for just say no I'm right. you. but you just got to do things and it's for families it's sometimes very difficult because again they want to do something you know that that they really mm -hmm. for them is going to speak something and then i have to make sure that the church is doing something and mm -hmm. and you guys have to be in that kind of that almost that that kind of shepherding kind of a situation where you're kind of like saying okay well we can honor both those traditions since both of them matter and since mm -hmm. both things are involved and how mm -hmm. do we do all that and how do we bring all that together exactly and you guys have been uh, you guys have been really really good about that through the years as have again all the directors here in town i mean you know mm -hmm. it's just like it's kind of like a learning process when it happens for everybody right you know, when somebody dies you don't think that you got a lot of stuff to learn about everything but there's plenty to learn at that particular moment isn't there one of the first lessons i got as a funeral director was from uh, Randy Wilson. Um, a lot of folks around the area will know him. But he goes, the second you think you know everything, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I've always tried to approach everything like that, and you know, no matter what it is, whether it be through you know, my profession or just in life in general. So, yeah. But I, yeah, I think you can't, there's, we're not, you can't be done learning, um, and you can't be too closed off to be in this profession. Otherwise, you won't, it's not for you. Yeah. So. You know, it's interesting to me, uh, you know, all the different things that you get to deal with because some people want innovation and they want something new for a funeral. Mm -hmm. And then, like, for example, in like my tradition, we ever ancient, ever new, we don't have a lot of, you know, difference about the way that we do that. I mean, it's set, in the, you know, we've, our ritual is kind of set and our liturgy, our mass is set. And so we can tailor some of the music. Mm -hmm. We can tailor some of the prayers a little bit. We can tailor some of that. Certainly the remarks you could tailor, mm -hmm. but we don't vary too much. Mm -hmm. And you know, and in some places they'd want definitely innovation, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So my guest this morning, Austin Woodard. Austin is one of our local, one of our, what I think is a great crew all across town and even in the surrounding communities of funeral directors. And we're talking a little bit about um, you know what that's like when somebody dies. So we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be right back. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about um, you know what might some of those innovations be. What are, what are some people looking for? Uh, and Austin would be able to at least give you some ideas about some of that as we move forward. So take a quick break. We're going to be right back. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN TV. 
brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, we're back after a quick break here with Austin Woodard. And Austin and I were just talking a little bit over the break uh, about the fact that, um, you know, we, 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 he gets all kinds of requests and all kinds of things. So, so what are some of the things that are kind of happening a little bit that, that would, in, you know, that, that are kind of the things that people are looking to do that might mm -hmm. be a little different in this day and age? Well, we had talked a little bit about cremation before. And uh, one of the things that, just in our experience, and uh, us at, at Mason Woodard Mortuary do push folks that do choose cremation, whether, you know, for whatever reason, but we, we, we encourage them to do something, whether it be some kind of service, whether it be through the funeral home or at home on themselves, honor the life that was lived. Because we do also offer grief, grief counseling, which uh, our grief counselor has been sick and under um, ill health. So we've had to put that on the back burner, burner for right now, but hopefully we'll get back to it because it's a way of our outreach to the community because we don't just stop once the funeral's over. Good, um, yeah, and I know that that's true for all the other groups too as and, well. Yeah. Trying and, to take care of a family is a, is not just a, I'm going to take care of you for this little day, mm -hmm. you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's these couple hours, that. I'm yours. No, yeah. it, uh, it doesn't happen that way. And I mean, we still, we're still there days after, to, you know, because there's paperwork to be done, but there's also just, we're there to talk to. Because yeah. I think the, the only thing that makes a, a decent funeral director is if they've been through a loss themselves. They, they know, and at some point you experience a loss, whether it be of a loved one or just a loss in general. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be a death. Uh, you've experienced it, you've been through it. So that makes you the best person to be in this position at that time is because you know you, you've gone through it. So we've been through these things and we've, we encourage those families to do these certain things and you know, whether, however you wanna do it, whether it be you know, through a memorial service or it be a barbecue, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. do something. And uh, you know, right now at the time we're in, in COVID-19. Oh, COVID, yeah, it's changed <laughs> a lot of things for it all has, of us. It, it threw yeah. us into a, a adapter or get out of the way situation mm -hmm. um, because this time was hard enough as it is and certainly with the restrictions granted we understand why they were in place it, a lot of folks had a hard time understanding because they're not only are they having to go through grief and the loss but now they're having to deal with what do you mean I can't have my mom's friends at their funeral so we had to adapt in ways that we never th it was kind of always spoken about but it never really ever entertained especially like in a smaller area like ours larger cities have had this in in place and we just recently adapted with the uh the idea of live streaming funerals uh, where we could with the family's permission uh be able to through our website family members even under quarantine could log on could, to our website could, and right. still participate in the funeral service right. even though we were down to 10 people could only attend our funeral services so and since the quarantine bans have been lifted even though we still have a mask restriction that is one thing that has continued and it probably will continue because even like we said with the families nuclear families nowadays family units getting smaller and smaller or, or they're just moving out branching out all across the country uh, families are still able to come together at that time of loss and mourn together yeah. whether it be in person or over the well, internet even if it's aunt tilly even if we get out of plague mm -hmm. this is where i keep saying to everybody we're we're gonna we're gonna be doing th some things differently into the future anyway because even if aunt tilly who is 98 is you know uh, you know trapped in springfield mm -hmm. and can't make it because she just had hip surgery or whatever she still now that we've raised this bar and made the live streaming possible mm -hmm. she's aunt tilly's still gonna want to be there right and we're just going to have to, you know, we're, we're going to be doing more and more to make it possible for Aunt Tilly to share in mm -hmm. that celebration and that grieving process mm -hmm. to do all that. And through that, with our website, what we've developed is a way to, for those folks to share, whether it be photo memories or they can leave a condolence or a story there for the family members to, right. to all participate in. So there's just, we're only just now touching the start of what we're able to do with computers and we'll reiterate to those folks that we'll we'll start the live stream about <laughs> five minutes beforehand and if you have any trouble we'll be there to, <laughs> to yeah. help you log on yeah so but uh it's just um 
different, exciting times, uh, especially for our profession. It's hard to say that um, because there's now there's only that much more we can do and we can offer to the families that we serve. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think about that part of the uh, that part of the innovation. But yeah, and why it's happening for us. So of course it's happening for you guys mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and again, even for those that are more quote secular funerals or whatever to do some of those things. Mm -hmm. What are what are some of the what are some of the other things in the secular realm? Because this is kind of it might be. I think it might be even. It's probably just going to make me smile. <laughs> um, you know, in terms of what are some of the requests that you've had in the last five, 10 years that, that, have, that have gotten a little bit more you know, on that innovative side? Um, by far, um, and we're in a different, you know, technology's taken over and, and uh, it's given people more freedom uh, to express about their loved one or their, themselves. And by far it has to be the personalized obituary. When somebody takes the time to sit down and I'm gonna write my obituary, you just plug the times in. Um, it it gives you more of a sense of that person even though i may not have known them while they were living i can appreciate who they were and are to the the people i'm sitting here having helping to serve during this tough time and that makes me go just recently as probably the best one i've ever read you know and it started off well uh, it was against my, my, I finally happened. Even though I didn't want it to happen, I passed away. <laughs> no matter, I, guess, I didn't believe my doctors. I didn't believe my wife. You know, like, yep. and it just, it was just so special. And I was able to. You had a glimpse you, of him. I had a glimpse of him. And I was even going around, you've got to read this <laughs> to people. I was sharing his story because of the way he did it. And it was just so personal and it was wonderful. And it made me work even, I mean, I can't say that much harder because I feel like I try to give 100% right. to everybody, but I felt like I dug down a little bit more and just wanted to do more as much as I possibly could for that family. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you, you had a glimpse of them and you had a you know, chance to know them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And usually a lot of times you, don't, you only get to know the family members. Right, and then we, you know? we had a lady that did one you know, a couple months ago and she, here's the keys to the long life that I've had. And she goes, don't do this, don't do that. If you smoke, you better stop. You know, just kind of laid it all out in the last paragraph. And then yeah. it was, it's, it's, it's a special time, um, you know, because the more things are changing, you can, the more things stay the same, but the personalization of it all is what really makes it that much more interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I've often mm. threatened, and of course my friends are going to laugh at this, and certainly anybody who knows me well is just like, I've often threatened to try to preach my own funeral. <laughs> but since I don't allow anything pre-recorded, because I think it all has to be live, <laughs> and true to the minute, I won't allow myself to do that. So, But I probably will leave plenty of instructions. All you, all you for, need is somebody just right there with the pause button. No, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Memorex is not the same for us as liturgy. It's not, it just, it doesn't, it takes something out of it. And especially when you have everything else live and then you switch to something recorded mm -hmm. it's just a whole different thing we're not you know and again we don't do a lot of you know stuff like they do at some of the churches where they got big you know projection screens and they're used to video and doing that i, I just don't we just don't <laughs> maybe it maybe at the wake service yeah but there i you just go. can't see just can't see it happening mm -hmm. for that other thing but i'm glad people are giving it a you little can bit lead of a your, touch. you can leave the rosary you on my own yeah <laughs> great <laughs> on your own. yeah no, I'm like, uh, so yeah, but it's mm -hmm. it is interesting just seeing that 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 some of that, mm -hmm. and I and I do I can appreciate very much when people will write some of those things. What, most of the time, when people write stuff, mm -hmm. or they leave me their file with their stuff and mm -hmm. say, okay, you know, Father Jay, here's my funeral plans, and I'm giving you a copy. Make sure they follow it, mm -hmm. you know, which I always get a big kick out of. You know, it's just like we're giving it to you so in case my kids don't want it done this way. You make sure they make know. sure you do it. You do, 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 <laughs> I want it done this way. Exactly. And they say, you make sure that, you know, because I gave you one and the funeral home one and I gave my kids mm -hmm. one, but, and then they'll, they'll, but that when they write what was going on in here, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it makes it so much easier to comfort, if you will, mm -hmm. those they leave behind. Right. Uh, because, you know, when, I say, you know, your mom always said, or your dad always said, or we know that this person, this was one of the things they said throughout. When they, when they, when they do those things, 
it makes it easier to do the comforting, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. I can do the religion side of things, no problem. I can make sure that we keep the resurrection for the Christians <laughs> going, because that's, that's my primary job. Right. But tying it in to figure out how to, to make it helpful for a family, mm -hmm. that always makes it so much easier. Right. Yeah. And then just brings that much more, you know, you know, it's hard to put into words. So you get to speak for all funeral directors now, okay? Because we got about two minutes left, okay? Mm -hmm. You get to speak for all funeral directors now. So what is it that you really want people who come to you to know, uh, who might be considering, you know, you or mm -hmm. uh, any other funeral director, you know, about helping at that time of someone's death? What What mm -hmm. are you there for? What do you What do you want for them to know? Well, you know, a lot of a lot of people folks focus just on the financial aspect of of what what we do as a as a profession. But I truly believe that anybody that takes on the role of funeral director uh, is doing so from a place of passion. Uh, it is truly a calling. Uh, because not only what you see is of me in that short window of time when we're sitting down and we're making the arrangements and then the time of the visitation and all that, but I'm also available 24-7 for everybody else uh, at that time and I'm being pulled away from family functions. Um, there's times I have to even, uh, you know, no matter what my own family is going through, I have to, to, to pull myself away to take care of somebody else. Mm -hmm. There's a sacrifice that comes along with this profession. Um, and, uh, people don't stay in it, uh, very long if they're in it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm third generation and it was instilled in me from my grandfather to my father, my mother, um, we're here to serve this community. We love this community, and we're still here to do those to help you at that most critical time and difficult and time. And it's that kind of attitude for you and most of the others who do your job around here mm -hmm. that makes me glad that I got partners in the enterprise along with you. Mm -hmm. We're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. A new baby changes the world and each of us. The Sisters of Mercy devoted themselves to offering exceptional maternity and delivery care, training generations of nurses to do the same. Mercy continues to answer the same call, to not only care for your baby, but to cherish them too. Mercy, in every era, your life is our life's work. Learn why we serve at mercy.net slash legacy. In Ireland, the first Sisters of Mercy were called the Walking Sisters because every day they went out in search of women and children who needed healing or help. Mercy continues to answer the same call dedicated to the health of every woman who comes to us for care. Mercy, in every era, your life is our life's work. Learn why we serve at mercy.net slash legacy. Well, again, we're always honored that you join us on Sunday mornings uh, for conversations about things that matter to us here in our area and as our neighbors in, in, in our town and in our town surrounding. Um, and I'm just going to tell you that uh, one, of the, one of the best, some of the best moments that I ever celebrate as a priest, some of my best moments I ever celebrate with the people I know and love are celebrations of people's lives because these times really matter to everyone. To, to take the opportunity to, to be with each other and to celebrate someone's life lived well, or even not so well, but, but that, that, that we knew we were tied together and it mattered anyway. And so our funeral directors around the area, again, I probably can't say enough good about them. So to all of you who do that job, thank you for doing it so well. I, I really feel blessed here in the greater Joplin area uh, and in the surrounding areas working with you guys, uh, all of you. you. You guys do your jobs well and it makes my job easier as well. We, that's how we take care of each other, and that's faith in our hometown. Join us next week. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.